Right, welcome to the Strength Condition Education webinar series where we're talking to a series of skills coaches uh, across a variety of sports about their experiences uh, with strength and conditioning in their careers and, and what they currently do. So we're delighted to welcome Jez Birds with us today. Uh, we're diving into the world of swimming, excuse the pun. Um, but so Jez is Director of Swimming at Bristol Henley, Henley Swimming Club. Jez, great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Do you want us to give us a little bit of a background about you and uh, and your career so far and what you're currently doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Um, yeah, so as you said, I'm uh, Director of Swimming at Bristol Henleys. Um, I've been in this role for uh, since about 2012, so kind of, you know, 14, uh, sorry, 12, 12 years now um, going through with it. Um, I, I'm also a school teacher as well, so I, I kind of run a, run a partnership program with the club. Um, within the school and it's the facility that we train out of um, but yeah doing it for 12 or so years we've got a program that starts with learn to swim so we've got little baby toddlers in with their parents going right the way through uh, social swimming fitness swimming we've got a competitive pathway um, right way through to senior master guys who are still you know performing on the international circuit so it kind of holds hopefully in, in every sort of aspect of, um, of the the kind of the participation side of swimming as well as the competitive yeah, nice. aspect of it as well so oh no that's great that's great and then we'll dive straight into it then so what kind of specific role has snc played within your your kind of career as a sports coach so far like you've obviously got a wide range of people that you're working with yeah um i mean it probably goes back to my experiences as an athlete um as as a swimmer through university um i was just kind of and it's probably because i liked the gym uh, i just liked working out that i was always trying to find ways of incorporating that into my training uh, there wasn't a huge amount of kind of knowledge or information out you know talking back in the late 90s early noughties yeah. um so there wasn't a huge amount out there we kind of felt our own way and sort of did things that we enjoyed that we thought might might help and benefit um but in turn i spent a lot of my undergraduate studies kind of trying to research and, and find out more about land training and how that can impact and how it can uh, not just sort of facilitate but also you know play a big part in in the development of the development of swimmers and so that interest sort of whether it's you know to just confirm my own biases what whatever it whatever it was um just kind of grew from there really a bit of an obsession with with the whole sort of movement and land and how we could transfer that across was there any transfer um took me in through my swim coaching career where I started my SNC coaching career as well and, and decided right. that, you know I needed to upskill myself I needed to get some qualifications get some knowledge um, at the time I was working with the university program so I got athletes who were accessing strength and conditioning but yeah. I wanted to make sure that I knew what was going on and that I, I, I kind of felt I could have those conversations with the strength conditioning coach and we could talk the same sort of language. If that yeah, nice, which so, is massive, massive part of it, right? Being yeah. on the same wavelength for ultimately the best benefit for your athletes. Totally, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. didn't want to just kind of go away and say, you know, I'm doing SNC on a Monday, come to me on a Tuesday morning and, you know, and that just sort of just never yeah. between meeting. It, it was kind of, well, if you're going to do that, let's try and work around what I'm doing and as well and so we, we can sort of have the, the best of both and and for a lot of years you know i i i, I would actually let, let the program be a bit led by the strength conditioning guys okay so nice. Like, what, what do you think these guys need and they say well ideally you know if i didn't have any constraints around um specific sports training i'd like to do x y and z I'm like, okay yeah. well if we do that what kind of sports training specific sports training would match well with it and so we, we kind of went down you know, these sort of nice different rabbit holes of conversations where uh, we came out with some pretty different, pretty cool ideas. And and yeah, the, the, the SNC sort of led it really. Okay, and I, nice. I tried to facilitate from from the other side. We, we tried that for a bit, and you know, had modicums of success. So it's um, it was certainly in, in, enjoyable to to do it that way. And now to try and apply it myself with. Uh, with the, the groups of athletes that I'm working with, it's um, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's it's it, I just find it constantly interesting and changeable. And, and you know the world of S and C, and there's yeah. so many different sort of almost paradigms and philosophies and so on, and, and kind of trying to unearth all of that and try and apply it in different ways, as you said, yeah. to get the to get the best results is um, it's kind of what what keeps us interested, what 
why we love what we do, I guess. You know? Yeah, that's really good. Like, that's really refreshing to hear from like a, a sports coach and a skills coach to have that open mindedness to be able to see how it can how it can help and drive your program. Is there anything kind of let's let's get in a little bit more detail then in terms of swimming specific and the key physical characteristics really for you as a swim coach that you're looking to develop for you from your S&C and from your land based training in in order to improve that import performance? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the kind of go to if you ask any swim coach, I'm, I'm sure around around the country, around the world, I'm, I'm sure the go to would be, you know, strength and power for the dives and for the turns, you know, the, the things yeah. that are really visually applicable to, to dry land exercises, you know, you can look at squats, squat jumps, broad jumps, yeah. all of those kind of things and think, well, surely that's got to have some positive transfer and crossover to the starts and turns. Um, but I, I think the, the, the big thing for me is, um, and this goes back to the very, very first course that I did, strength conditioning course, uh, with SNC Education. Um, and uh, Brendan Chaplin, who was, you know, kind of been a mentor of mine for, for a lot of years, he put a slide up and it, it, it was uh, the old adage, you know, you can't fire a cannon from a pit. And so it's obviously trying to get this message across, you know, that we need to create stability and we need, you know, the, the base of support with the foot, you know, for, for doing the squat movements, the Olympic movements. And, um, and that, it kind of brought the conversation that I had with him after the series. He said, but what if I need to fire a cannon from a canoe? Because in <laughs> essence, uh, you know, as, as swimmers, we've got to try yeah. and produce as much force as we can repeatedly whilst we're in that slightly unstable, you know, aquatic environment. So... So that sort of, again, just triggered another sort of path of thought for me of you know, how do we actually generate that yeah. level of strength and stability from within when we yeah. don't have necessarily the external you know, floors and the walls and the, the solid surfaces to apply that force from. So starts, turns, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's, a, there's a real clear kind of crossover. I think, but, yeah. but yeah, how do you, how do you create that self-stability you know, emanating from the trunk you know, how do you get that connection from fingertips through to toes? Um, you know, really prevalent, like throwing sports, javelin and stuff like that. You know, that whole sling action, of, yeah. uh, the plant and front foot, how that translates all the way through the body. Similarly, how can I do that when I haven't got anything to plant my foot upon? So, th yes. yeah, that, that's the quest, I think. Man, yeah, of course, sort of, yeah. Sort of, the know, questions we're still asking, Brian. Right? trying on earth, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, cool. And then let's go Let's go back to swimming then in terms of the part of the performance side of things. We're, where do you think kind of more globally as a um, as a sport, if you like, what, what's the current knowledge out there in terms of land based training in S&C? Is it varied? Is it quite, is it quite mixed? Do you see in from your experience, um, obviously different clubs, different levels? What where is it at? Yeah, yeah, I think I think exactly that, you know, different clubs, different levels, uh, certainly within sort of the more pro circuit, the senior circuit, as I mentioned, working with the university myself. I had access to strength conditioning coaches. Yeah. The athletes went and they, they met with them. Fortunate enough that I could make those connections. Um, and so we, we could keep that, that level of conversation open. And I think probably those sort of programs worldwide will have very, very similar access. You know, yeah. very, very knowledgeable, accredited S&C coaches, um, linking up with those swim programs and producing some really good results. So I think at that level, it's it's come on massively. And yep. people have, have really embraced it over the past probably 10, 15, maybe 20 years um, and realized the importance of it and how it can, you know, not just only add things to their performance, but kind of facilitate the holistic side of it as well. You know, the, the variability of the program, um, injury prevention and all those kind of elements that, that are massively important as well, making robust, resilient athletes and um, and just a different way of kind of stimulating them. So yeah. that level, I, I think that's on a, on a really good trajectory. And I, like with any s &C, there's so much knowledge and information out there now and, and so many different kind of uh, X accounts, Twitter accounts, whatever we call yeah. it, and, and so on, that are full of disseminating that information, uh, which can be hard itself, you know, to, to figure yeah. out what's the knowledge, what's, what's the good, yeah, what's bad, that. yeah. And again, that, that's sort of part of the ride. But, um, but I think within, like... The sort of age group and the youth setting it's still probably a little bit more mixed um yep. there are some some that do have good access to to knowledge and and, and to, to personalities you know some have got coaches who have got strength and conditioning backgrounds or that they, they've got themselves courses um and um, and qualifications um others that possibly don't 
you know, and, yeah. and, and, and finding that access can be difficult. I know within the, the sort of Swim England coaching qualifications, there's a big kind of element of pre pool and post pool, so yeah. kind of mobilizing and, and recovery from that element. Um, but there isn't a huge component which actually delves into, you know, the, the, the X, Ys, and Zs. Of yeah, the performance side of things and how yeah, that can transfer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and a lot, you know, a lot of that for you know, kind of insurance purposes and you know, needing qualifications to be able to deliver that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, that that's somewhere where there's um, there's still a bit of work to work to be done. I, you know, from my perspective, I, I think that we can make some really really good youth gains. I think yeah. by, by acknowledging more on what in that area. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you there, Jez. That's been great. Listen to the point. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for your time. I know how busy you are. Start a term, all yeah. of that stuff with all your swimming Absolutely. stuff going on. But listen, we really appreciate your time and and, and fountain of knowledge in this area. And that it's, it's been great to talk to you. No worries. Absolute pleasure. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Chris. Yeah, cheers. Take care. Cool. Take care. See you, you soon. Bye See you bye. later. Bye bye. bye.